Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce theme development with WooCommerce REST API. So far we've got the products being displayed uh, but there are a few updates we need to make. So for instance, if I try to build this application, say npm run build, you'll notice that you will get some error. So it says export encountered errors on follow path, right? So it is having some issues on to the rendering. Of course, we didn't have any issues during development, but we do have issue while building the applications. Now, can you figure out why, you know, why do you think we are getting this issue? So maybe pause the video, try it out yourself and see if you can figure out if you really want to test this. So I'm assuming that you have tested it. And if you have not been able to figure out, let me tell you why this is happening. Okay. So the issue is actually on the index.js, which is our home page, because you can see that it says the issue is actually in the pre-rendering the page root. Now, of course, there is no issue here in getting the data for header and footer because that is being served from an external endpoint, which is third party, right? But when we are rendering the data, which is product data from our own endpoint, that particular endpoint isn't ready. So when you are building the application, that endpoint isn't available because, you know, of course your application is not running at that point. So in order for us to fix that, there are a couple of things that you can do. Either if you want to go ahead and keep this approach itself, which is use your own endpoint, which calls the third party uh, endpoint under the hood, then you can just use try and catch method and in case if there's any error, then you just, just pass the empty array as product data. But what would happen in that case is that the first time your application is rendered, at that point, products data won't be available. So your first user is going to have this particular thing empty. But the next time it gets rendered, because the endpoint would have already been available at that point, then Next.js will get the data, it'll put that in the cache and, and all other users will have the data available, okay? So you could do that, but I think I personally don't like that experience wherein the first time it loads, you don't have the products available. So what we're gonna do is instead of calling our own endpoint, of course we'll keep our endpoint in case if we need to use it for a client side request. However, for server side requests, it's best that we do not call our own endpoint because it's not going to be available during the build time and uh, just uh, call the third party endpoint. So what we're going to do is we will create a function instead. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to go over here and then I'll create, I'll take products. Okay. And inside of that, I'm going to come over here. I'll pick this up and I'll put that there. And then I'll say const get products data equals async okay say async and then this and then what we're going to do now is we'll just say per page okay over here so we'll directly use the per page we can remove the request okay await get rid of all of this Okay, like so, and this can be export const, and then we'll go over here, and instead we'll say get products data, and then we can pass the products data and see what we get here. Okay, so I'm going to for now let's just print and see what we get here. So I'll say products data, and see what we get. So now if we check this node. We're going to check that products data. So great. We've got the product, which is excellent. And we can just say products and we can directly pass that. Okay. And then we can just check what this particular component is checking. So it's checking products, product, all good, all good. Yep. There you go. And now if I check refresh, just have to remove this just have to remove this console there you go refresh perfect you've got the products which is excellent all right so that's how we got this fixed and now if i build it 
let's try to build it npm run build there you go ideally we should not get that error okay generating static pages perfect amazing right okay so now if i run npm run start to start our production server we have this available at localhost 3000 which is again the same port and there we go congratulations so we've got our application running and that is all server side rendered okay now if you want to do try and catch over here to handle errors you can do that but i'm skipping that for now to save time we'll come back later on that probably uh, if we have time and we can do the try and catch method to handle the errors i think they could do this at the time when we are uh, creating the 404 pages so that if the request fails the user is directed to 404 etc yeah, to handle all of those things but for now let's just continue okay so i'm going to see you in the next video and we will start with the add to cart functionality thank you very much bye bye